Hello there and welcome to In My Opinion for Tormented Souls for the PS4. You play as Caroline Walker who one day receives this mysterious letter from Wildberger Hospital that contains a photo of two little girls. Ever since she's gotten that photo she hasn't felt right and can't sleep. So she decides to go to said hospital to find some answers but in the process gets knocked out and someone has taken her eye out of a socket. She also finds out that there are some truly horrifying things within this place. But this will not stop her from her goal of finding out what exactly is going on and finding these two girls. I found the mystery of the hospital and the girls to be rather interesting as the game kept me wanting to find out more and the more I found out, the more I wanted to continue. There aren't many characters in the game and our lead Caroline is okay as I found nothing really annoying about her and her reactions are pretty believable. Now while you can follow the story for the most part without picking up the files laid about, they do help fill in a lot more details of what happened. So I would still suggest getting as many as you can and thankfully they are not super hidden and you can go back and find any of them before the final encounter. I found the game's conclusion to be pretty satisfying and there are three different endings you can unlock depending on certain things you do within the game. As you can tell this game goes back to the old school roots of survival horror games like Resident Evil. You have two types of movement options which is tank controls by using the d-pad and full 360 movement by using the left analog stick. I like the fact that the game gives you an option to use both. Not only that, but going back and forth to see which feels better for you is really easy. While the 360 movement works just fine, I personally stuck with the tank controls and it just felt better for this type of game, especially with the fixed camera angles. Of course you have a run button and even a quick spin to help get around faster. Combat itself is kind of what you expect from this type of game. You hold aim and all log on takes care of the rest. It sounds easy but you have to learn how to space yourself from the enemy. Since while they do take hits, they can get to you pretty fast and you do take a good amount of damage from just a hit or two. Also you're not allowed to aim and move so you really have to make a choice of whether to stand your ground or not. The game does give you a dodge option that works pretty well and it can save your life once you learn the timing and it does give you this yeah you miss feeling when you pull it off. There's another factor that comes into combat which is ammo as there's a finite amount and you never really feel flooded with it, same goes for health items. In fact I've had a few holy shit moments when I've noticed my ammo and health items were kind of dwindling. You have to learn how to manage your resources as well and if for some reason you run dry of ammo you have the option to try and dodge around the enemies or use your crowbar to take them down. It's doable, just very dangerous. There are two other guns you can find as you explore the building which is a shotgun and an electric type gun, but these even have less ammo to spare. So while the combat is pretty straightforward, all the other elements that surround it make it tense and pretty gratifying. While it might seem like a pain to get around since the building is pretty huge, it's not too much of a problem since a good amount of the areas are interconnected. So as you open new doors this can lead to shortcuts to other areas letting you backtrack faster which is a good thing since you'll be doing that a lot. You also have a handy dandy map for every new floor you open up which lets you know where you're at currently and lets you plan out your route if you have an idea where to go. You're handsomely rewarded for exploring to the fullest as you can find some much needed ammo and health supplies. Also you can find recording tapes which is needed to save your game. You can't infinitely save but I felt there was more than enough tapes for the whole game. There is a nice little feature added for saving as depending when you save Caroline will give a brief summary of what she's going through. Also while something like Resident Evil has those crazy store items, this game does not but it's not an issue since you can hold as much stuff as you want. There is a problem when it comes to the maps though I will touch on that in the presentation section. The game also has a little extra challenge as you explore since the darkness around you can swallow you whole and kill you. It even comes into play during combat since you can't shoot while in the darkness and either must find a bright spot to shoot from or make your own light source with your lighter. Another big part of this game is its puzzles and there are a lot of them. There are some that has you just bringing one item to another area, while some others have you really think like this early heartbeat puzzle that pleasantly surprised me at how well it was done. There's even some that use a special little mechanic you earn later on in the game and does a good job with it, though I won't say what it is because it would spoil the game. However, there are some that are very obtuse as it's not very really clear what you're supposed to be paying attention to and sometimes it makes you overthink things, like the register puzzle or the key door puzzles. I'm not gonna lie, I looked up the answer for some of these and I said to myself, well I would have never fucking figured that out. The puzzles range from a good challenge to just plain ridiculous and I would have liked a much better balance. Though I will say there is only one truly bad puzzle, since one of the answers are not even within the game itself which is total bullshit. Yeah I'm looking at you clock puzzle. There ain't much unlockables for the game but there is a secret nail gun that the game gives you a hint about after you beat it. However, if you already know how to find it, you don't need to beat the game to use it. This nail gun is godlike as it takes down enemies with a rapid shot every single time instead of just stunning them with each hit. This makes combat a breeze and if you want your first playthrough to be super easy, you can pick this up. You know, I was worried about playing the PS4 version since it came out after the PS5 version. 
The good news is, I didn't have anything to worry about in the end as the game still looks really good, especially the environments. They're more of a modernized version of pre-rendered backgrounds, and they are wonderful to look at be it something like the statues or the dilapidated areas. This combined with some great light work helps give off that horror atmosphere that you most likely came for. The building itself has some varied areas making exploration exciting as you're not just running down the same looking hallways over and over. Sound also plays a role in setting the mood and even helps during gameplay as we have fixed camera angles and if a creature is by the music will ramp up and it doesn't die down till the problem is taken care of. Speaking of sound, let's talk about the voice acting, which is kind of... eh. I don't know, it just felt a bit off, though it doesn't take you out of the game. The character models themselves just look okay, as they are not the most detailed and can look a bit off sometimes near the environment, but it's not something I would call eye-bleeding ugly. The character designs are actually really good, though, as you get a decent amount of grotesque and creepy looking creatures trying to end your life, and I do like the look of our lead. What's pretty neat is they added a free costume that you can equip as soon as you start the game, and while the default outfit is not bad, I really prefer the extra costume, and that's why you only really see that in my gameplay. Now to talk about a big issue I had with the game, which was bugs. I ran into two of them. One was an odd bug where my ammo would be less after I loaded my game, but thankfully this can be fixed just by reloading your game. The other has to do with the game's maps, in which I would collect the map to see it, then after closing the map menu and then reopening it, the map would disappear. There is no easy fix for this and instead you would have to start the game all over and try again to see if it would happen again. What I suggest is there is usually another copy of the map on the wall close to the pickup version. Don't look at the wall version, instead just get the pickup copy and check if it disappears after closing it and opening it. If it's still there, then you're good for the rest of the game. Besides that headache, I didn't run into any other bugs. And the game ran pretty well on the PS4 as I never noticed a hitch in the frame rate during my playtime. Father, what are you doing here? Don't you see, child? I am eating some soup. God feeds my spirit, but I have to take care of my body. Oh my, what is this doing in my soup? Get rid of this thing, would you? I found some information about the twins. I think someone means to perform surgery on them. Even if it's an annoying map bug, I still had a really great time. The atmosphere is fantastic, the mystery keeps you engaged, and it has an enjoyable combat system that keeps you on your toes. My first one took me about 10 hours, but I wouldn't be surprised if a good amount of that time is because of the puzzles I was stuck on. There ain't that much replay value unless you want to do another run with that god gun that I talked about. I would love to play more games made by this team, but I do hope they improve on balancing their puzzles. If you enjoy survival horror games, especially ones that are like the classics, then I highly recommend this game. I hope you enjoy my thoughts on this game, and for gamer's sake, keep gaming.